biggest discrete choice model for predicting people behavior and market demand. This model is very important and useful for marketing decision making. Though the application of this model is huge, but for this video, we are focusing upon only on marketing. Discrete choice model is the category of research method that will measure the relative importance of a set of options according to a group of people. Discrete means uh, individual options which is presented, choice pertains to the decision making process and modeling which involves these discrete choices to predict the individual preferences. Now, these models are well suited for ranking items, but it is based on some criteria. What are these criteria? One is the preference. That means what individual prefer the most among other available options. Second, what are their pain points? That means what are the most significant unmet needs or the challenges? Then third, what options hold the highest perceived value for individual? Then what are the primary barriers which are hindering individuals from taking actions? Then pinpointing the key drivers which are motivating individuals to take action and what are the uh, foremost concerns or perceived risk associated with different options. Now, which research methods fall under discrete choice models? These are the various survey formats which are tailor based according to different research needs. One is the ranked choice voting where participants will order a list of options based on their personal preferences. The another one is a point allocation where participant will allocate points to uh, options according to their preferences. Then pairwise comparison where participants will compare two options at the same time. Max diff analysis where participants select the best and worst options from a list of three to six choices. There is another method which is a very famous one conjoint analysis where participants will select the best profile composed of category based variable to determine the most important category and the ranked order of variables within each category. Let's take this example ranked choice voting scenario. A group of friends is planning a movie night but they have different preferences. When it comes to movie genres, they decided to use rank choice voting to determine which movie to watch. Now, what is the process? Each friend is provided with a list of movie genres to rank based on their preferences. Now, you can see the options are action, comedy, drama, horror and sci-fi. Now, each friend is ranking the movie genre according to their personal preferences with being uh, one, their most preferred one and the five being their least preferred one. Now, after everyone has ranked their choices, the rankings are tallied up. Okay, and the movie genre with the highest overall ranking is selected for the movie night. Now, you can see five friends, Alice, Bob, Charlie, Dave and Emily. They have already provided their uh, first and the last, you know, accordingly they have put their choices. Now, in the left hand side, you can see example ranking where we have put that what are the values they have provided. Once we have collected each and every one, the highest one, which comes out to be the horror movie. So this is the one example uh, where rank choice voting is being used. Now you can see based on the ranking, horror is the most preferred movie genre. So the group decided to watch a horror movie on their movie night. Now. Let us go and take another example. Point allocation survey. Now what we are going to do here in this scenario a company is planning a team building event and want to decide on the activities to include. They decide to conduct a point allocation survey to gather preferences from their employees. Now what is the process? The company provide a list of potential team building activities to the employee. The options are escape room challenge, outdoor adventure, cooking class, uh, paintball, karaoke night and board game night. Each employee is given a set of uh, number of points to allocate among the activities based on their preferences. For example, let us say that each employee has given 20 points to allocate. Employees distribute their points among the activities which assigning more points to the activities they prefer and fewer points to those activities which are they are less interested in. After all, employees have allocated all the points. Now you can see the point for each activities are again tallied up to determine the most preferred activities. Now, 
Once they have done, uh, we are going to see in the left hand side that which one has uh, got the highest point. So after calculations, we found that based on the point allocation, escape room and the paintball are the most preferred activities which receives the 20 point, right? Each point has received the 20 point. Therefore, the company decided to include both escape room and paintball in their team building event. Let us go and see another one which is peer wise comparison. Now, this is the scenario. A marketing team is tasked with selecting a new logo for their company. They want to gather feedback from team members on the potential logo design. They decide to conduct a peer wise comparison survey to determine the most preferred logo. So, what they have done? This is the process which you can see. Let us see that uh, there are, uh, you know, five potential logos which are labeled as A, B, C, D and E. Each team member is shown pair of logo design side by side and they were asked to select the preferred logo from each pair. Now, the team members grow through a series of pairwise comparisons systematically comparing each logo design against every other design. Now, uh, you see pair one which is logo A versus logo B. Now, team members three team members were there and they, uh, they have uh, provided their preferred one. Similarly, there is a pair two which is a logo A versus logo C. There also they have provided their uh, options and then uh, this has continued for all the possible pairs. So, now once we have done all these things, we will going to tally the preferences. And what we found that logo A has received two votes, logo B one, logo C has received two votes, logo D has not received anyone and uh, E has received one vote. So, based on the pairwise comparison, logo A and logo C are tied as the most preferred option which receives two votes. So, marketing team selected, uh, further discusses and then they evaluated the, these two options to make the final decision on the new logo design. So, this is an example of the pairwise comparison. Now, let us see an example of uh, another one which is a max def. Now, in this uh, scenario, a restaurant chain is planning to update its menu and want to determine which dishes are most preferred by customer. And this is conducted by Max Diff Analysis Survey to gather the insight into the customer preferences. Now, what is the process? Here you can see the restaurant provide a list of menu items to the survey participants. Now, let us say that there are six potential dishes, burger, pizza, salad, pasta, sushi, and steak. Now, participants are shown set of four menu items at a time and are asked to indicate the most and the least preferred dishes from each set. Each participant goes through a multiple set of choices. The max diff analysis software will going to calculate the frequency with which each menu item is selected as the most preferred and the least preferred option, right? After all the responses are collected, the most preferred and the least preferred dishes are determined based on the aggregate preferences of the participant. For example, here you can see set one, which is burger, pizza, salad, and pasta and set two is pizza, sushi, steak and salad. Now, each uh, participant was provided a list and they were asked to uh, rank it. Most preferred, they have said, uh, one participant has said pizza and least preferred is a salad one. Another one has also uh, made their choices. Similarly, for set two, they have also made some kind of choices. Now, once we have done, now we are going to tally the preferences. So, what we found that the most preferred uh, got burger, got the 15 vote, pizza 20, salad 5, pasta 12, sushi 18 and stick 10. Similarly, least preferred here we can see burger 8, pizza 6, salad 25, pasta 9 vote, sushi 7 and stick 16. So, once we have calculated all these things, then we've realized because based on this max diff analysis, pizza is the most preferred dish while salad is the least preferred one. So, restaurants can use this information to adjust its menu offering according to the focus for promoting the most popular dishes. Choice models offer valuable insight uh, into various aspects of decision making. And these models serve as powerful tools for understanding several key areas. One is the market strategy development. So by analyzing consumer preferences, these models can help in crafting effective marketing strategies customized to tailor uh, to target audience. Then it also help in new product design. So it helps uh, in identifying 
find the features and attribute that resonate most with the consumers then market share profitability and margin optimization these uh, models also help in optimizing the market share profitability by uncovering the factors and derive the consumer choice and willingness to pay branding issues as well so from assessing from brand equity to exploring co branding opportunity and affinity branding these models can help you uh, on providing various branding challenges it will also enable businesses to strengthen their brand positioning and appeal then ultimately it can also help in the customer retention and profitability so by understanding the customer preferences and their behavior in designing uh, you know we can convert it in designing the strategies for enhancing customer retention and maximizing the profitability over the long term now models also have pros and cons so what are the benefits one is the it i capture the preferences it has flexible modeling the predictive power is very good they can provide you with the policy insight segmentation is very good as well as the efficient resource allocation but uh, there are some limitation one it is data intensive second the uh, modeling is a little bit complex then it is based on the assumptions the scope of these models are limited as well as there can be some kind of sample biasness and difficulty in attribute specification models are widely used for analysis of individual choice behavior and can be applied to choice problems in many fields such as economics engineering environmental management urban planning and transportation in this video we have focused upon only on the marketing techniques thank you so much